conflict for many young black men and women was how they could be a part of the civil rights movement and still maintain their Christian faith. February is Black History Month. One of the most important chapters in the history of the African-American experience is the civil rights movement. Ralph Bell is an African-American who was in the thick of it, along with his friend and boss, Billy Graham. Ralph is our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. Ralph served as an associate evangelist with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association for 40 years. And years before Ralph joined the team, Billy Graham was taking bold public stands against racism. Ralph says he and Mr. Graham both understood that racism is, quote, a problem of sin, not skin. GPS. God. People. Stories. 1965 is the year Ralph Bell joined the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. And what a year it was. When I became a part of the association, it was in the 60s, and there was a lot of turbulence then. And Dr. Martin Luther King was demonstrating in the streets in the south and the various cities in the north as well. And things were in quite an upheaval. Nineteen sixty five was the year civil rights activist Malcolm X was assassinated. It was the year the first American ground combat troops entered Vietnam. It was the year of the Watts race riots in Los Angeles and the year of the Selma to Montgomery marches in Alabama in support of voting rights. The conflict for many young black men and women was how they could be a part of the civil rights movement and still maintain their Christian faith. At least that was a conflict for many believers. They were hearing voices that were calling them to stand up for civil rights and take a stand. And there were also inner voices that was calling them to do what was righteous. So when Ralph joined Billy Graham's ministry team in 1965, he spent most of his time meeting with young black people. He wanted to help them get what he called a proper perspective. His work took him everywhere from colleges to prisons. I just shared with him the fact that God was a God of justice and therefore we had to do things that were just. And at the same time, we had to take a stand against anything that was wrong because of our Christian faith and be a witness at the same time. There is no room for violence or those kinds of things, no matter how angry you might feel. I felt that conflict also in the jails and prisons of this country where I spent a lot of time, a lot of young men in there who were incarcerated who were hearing the call to join the Muslim faith and to be revolutionaries and We were sharing the Christian message of a just God, but also a loving God and a nonviolent God. And a God who has the power to change hearts. Ralph says, I was so glad for the power of the gospel. In my own strength, we couldn't really do anything or make any changes. But through the power of the gospel, as young people committed themselves to Jesus Christ, they found a new strength and a new joy also in the center of their hearts to be sympathetic with the civil rights movement and to help where they could, but at the same time to demonstrate love and turn the other cheek when people were bitter toward them and violent toward them and uh, take a stand for the cause of Jesus Christ. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Taking a stand for Jesus Christ on the race issue was something that Ralph's boss and friend Billy Graham had been doing for quite some time. For example, back in the 50s, Billy personally took down the ropes that local officials had set up to separate blacks from whites at one of his crusades down south. He was a major force all along the way encouraging black churches and black people 
and others who felt the sting of racism and prejudice along the way and became a major factor in helping this country see themselves as they really were and make some very specific changes in the way they conducted their governments. In the course of doing that, Billy Graham was sometimes the target of demonstrations, in the South, of course, but also in the North. Sometimes those demonstrations came right at the moment of the invitation. By the invitation, Ralph's referring to the moment in Billy Graham's crusades, at the end of the message, when he invites people to give their lives to Jesus Christ. Where groups of people had planned to disrupt the invitation and try to disrupt the message. So it happened in northern cities as well, and maybe in a little different way, but the racism was still there, and the the struggles were still there. Billy Graham brought the weight of the gospel to bear upon racism publicly and privately. Ralph remembers being in a crusade planning meeting in a southern city when one of the local men in the room made a racially insensitive joke. Mr. Graham called him out on it in a firm but loving way. He said it wasn't in keeping with the gospel. Ralph says that incident spoke volumes to him about Mr. Graham and reaffirmed his love for him. that Mr. Graham did to help encourage justice in this country were things that were done behind the scenes and done because Mr. Graham was a man of justice and peace. But he helped Martin Luther King get out of jail on some occasions and helped financially to make that possible. Martin Luther King Jr. and Billy Graham were friends, and Ralph says they would privately discuss the best ways to address the race problem in the U.S. Martin Luther King said he believed the best way to do it was the way Mr. Graham was doing it, is to meet people in the center of their hearts with the gospel, and that was the way to bring about change. It was good to bring about change publicly and socially, but for those changes to be lasting and meaningful and really sincere. It took a changed man in the center of his heart to accomplish that. That kind of change is one that Ralph says he and the team saw take place in the lives of a lot of people. One of the most amazing examples of it happened in Chicago. Mr. Graham went to meet the gang leaders in Chicago, and people warned him against that, but he had a heart for young people, and especially young people who were misdirected And so he went, uh, arrangements were made, and he went down into the heart of Chicago and met with gang leaders and spoke to them about change and how the gospel can bring that about and understanding some of the things that they were feeling and injustices that they were encountering and answered some of their questions. Well, much to the surprise of everyone, on one of the youth nights in the Chicago crusade, As many as 500 young people responded to the gospel. And the astounding thing to us was when they came forward, many of them laid their guns and knives down on the platform and committed themselves to the Lord. And that was an amazing sight to see, and it spoke highly of the power of the gospel. Amazing grace. The The gospel of Jesus Christ. It has the power to change your life, too. When you surrender your life to Jesus, when you ask him to forgive your sins, he fills you with the Holy Spirit and you become a whole new person. You can learn a lot more about it at our website, billygramradio.org. Click on the tab, Grow Your Faith, up at the top of the page. Again, it's billygramradio.org. We've got one more recollection from Ralph Bell in just a minute. He explains how Billy Graham's work for racial equality caused problems with some churches in the North. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. I'm often asked if the Bible has anything to say about the beginning of the races and the various colors of skin. Billy Graham. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us where the colors of skin came from. The Bible says we're made of one blood, all the races under heaven, and we all are creatures of God. 
Here's what the scripture says. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. In other words, your heart is the thing God looks at. He doesn't look at the color of your skin. He doesn't look at your bank account. He doesn't look at your social status. He looks upon your heart. And the question is not race or skin color. The question tonight is, can a man's heart be permanently changed? God can change it. Jesus said, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And no one is ever going to get to heaven unless they have believed with all their heart and confessed with their mouth the Lord Jesus. I'm going to ask you tonight to receive, to believe in your heart, to commit to surrender. And now back to the hosts of GPS. Phil Fleischman, and Jim Kirkland. The Decision America Tour with Franklin Graham is well underway. Thousands of people have turned out for the first few stops already. Each stop is actually a prayer rally. Franklin shares the gospel. He encourages Christians to live out their faith at home, in public, and at the ballot box. And he leads the crowd in a time of prayer. There's a lot to learn about the Decision America Tour, and you can do so at DecisionAmericaTour.com. That's DecisionAmericaTour.com. Ralph Bell said, It appears to be the grace of God that brought Billy Graham's crusade ministry along at the same time as the civil rights movement in the U.S. He says Mr. Graham's strong stand against segregation caused issues for the ministry with churches above and below the Mason-Dixon line. We came into cities in the north where pastors and others were on the fence and didn't know if they wanted to cooperate with us and felt that if they did it would jeopardize their ministry in some way. And it was Mr. Graham's message and our task as associates to help correct those views and tell people that Mr. Graham was interested in justice and his crusades would not be segregated in any way and he would preach a strong gospel to America, that if you were a child of God, there was going to be a change in your life and your attitude, and you would accept people just as our Lord accepts everyone and died for everyone. And for some, that was a message that was hard to swallow and to digest, but they saw that it came straight from the scriptures and that it was gospel truth. So we were uh, very much encouraged all along the way as We took our stand as black associates. Ralph Bell holds a Master of Divinity degree, as well as two doctorates. He served as a pastor, a professor, and a prison chaplain before joining the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. We thank Ralph for the time he's given us today on GPS, and especially thank him for his service to the Lord. We post a new episode of GPS every Wednesday. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and TuneIn Radio, as well as at BillyGrahamRadio.org. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland. We share each episode of GPS also on Facebook. To find us there, just search for Billy Graham Radio. Thank you for being with us for this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. Family.